Looks like another spectacular day. Looks beautiful. And I even seen a few sedge scooting around this morning. Oh, did you? I did. Well, that's a good sign. You know what? After that dinner we had last oh, night, the, uh, the decadent rib, prime decadent. rib, it was fantastic. But you know what? We're expecting the same today, I would think. We're hoping. We're, we're hoping because we had a spectacular, again, we came yeah. in for dinner, but they were on those sedge and catching big fish on dry yeah. flies. And so we said, let's go back and do it today. Well, guess what? That's today as we take you sport fishing on the fly. Sport Fishing on the Fly is brought to you by Togan's Fly Shop, Maui Jim Sunglasses, and Hardy Rods and Reels. Down in the weeds. So what happened is we moved to a different spot and I put on a uh, had my my good ruby eye and I've been catching them on that you know that eight pound test all the time. Well I got a toad on it ripped through these lily pads cut them all off and of course snapped me off. So now I've taken Uncle Teddy's advice and I've gone with the the 15 pound. I've got heavy stuff. Oh it's another nice one though. Oh another gorgeous fish. Look at this. Oh, look at that. Look at the back on this thing. Oh. Wow. That is a pretty fish. Right on, oh, right on the edge of those weeds. Oh. Ho, 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 ho. oh. I'll take him to this side. Lighting's better over here. Oh, yeah. Look at that. There's the. There's the old. You know, the old. Uh, John's Magic Brown Jig. Killer. Killer. Unfortunately, it's one of our last ones with, and this one's got a little different color to it. Hold this guy up for everybody. Uh, there he is there, little guy. Nice size. Oh, there he goes. So another ideal setup that we like to use is a clear intermediate sink, especially when you're in, you know, eight feet of water, you've got lily pads around. And then you've got an option. You can, uh, you know, as long as you're stripping damsels back towards the weed, you can have luck. I put on a, uh, a um, sedge pupa, which is always good. And this guy <laughs> is our standard size, big toad. He is not. Oh, jeez. Oh. Oh, He's got some He's got girth. some girth. How am I going to get him up? He's big. What the hell? This is a six-weight rod, and I can't get him up. Oh man. There he is there. Oh, oh he's big. He's a big toad. He's not wanting to come in. Come on. I got good heat on him too. Okay. Oh. Size of him. 
Oh. Oh. There's another, there's another solid 24, 25. There, look at, there's the little, the little uh, sedge nymph that I like to use, sedge pupa. Let's hold them up right here. Oh, there he is there. Just your, you know, look at how fat they are. They're just beautiful, beautiful fish. And he's just gonna go. Wow, he's he still wants to. Oh, <laughs> nice. So we saw the little sedge pupa. So we've seen some traveling sedge, different sizes. So I saw some big ones. So I put on a bigger pattern. And sometimes you get the small ones. So you get small little light ones. You get bigger light ones, bigger dark ones. I prefer the big. So once the big ones start, put on a big pupa, and it's clear to me to sink. Start banging them. Sweet on the dry fly now he's going so we just had a couple of nice ones we just switched over you know that's the thing about cats this guy's small but there's big guys out there too i got one of the little guys i'll just unbutton them yeah i just but, lost a big one yeah you know the beauty the beauty of the caddis when they come off is not only do you get the nymphs like we showed you right drifting drifting uh nymph patterns and stuff but you get the dry fly which is great and oh, there he goes and using you know, big Nicklock sedge patterns. You gotta love it. And he just drifted in the weeds, let it float, bloop, bloop, and then wait for a boil. It actually scares you a lot of times that you actually pull away. Dale just missed two. I got that guy, so we're just starting. Hopefully the wind doesn't kick up too much because we got caddis starting to skitter. It'd be great to get him on the dry. Oh, fun stuff. Come on, back in the air. <laughs> oh, oh, that's just some spectacular jokes. They hit that dry fly, man. Oh, they're in looking. Oh. You know, isn't it great oh. on the dry? It's just fantastic. On dry flies? Yeah. Oh, Absolutely. that guy, the lump, light, he almost oh, came he in the boat. Oh, he took two huge aerials. I'm oh. trying, to, trying to get another one, but... Man, he took two monsters and then he stopped jumping. Look at the runs, though, eh? They're tough oh, fish. It. It's a nice fish on a dry fly. Oh, anytime you get dry fly. Yeah, big nickel okay. sedge like that. <laughs> you, you gotta love that. This is the best in the world. <laughs> you know, you get them all day on nymphs, like we did, then you switch over when the dries start popping and, and you get them on dry fly. It's fantastic. Oh, nice fish too. Oh yeah, it looks good. Oh yeah, but they're, you know, they're gonna be a lot bigger than that too. Yeah, well, we, you know, I we missed a couple we, yeah, on that exactly. first. But what an aerial on this one. That was what was spectacular. He just about come in the boat. Okay, let's see if I can't land him. Oh yeah, look at Just a little bulkster. Yeah. Oh, a nice fish. Yeah, right there. Yeah. See the big mick look Oh, if you can get fish like that on the dry, you know, that's not huge yet, but there's bigger ones out there. I'll see. There's my... <laughs> The big, the big Michelin. The big sedge. Nice, eh? Oh, yeah. Nice on dry flies. There he goes. All right. Nice. And we've missed like three big boils. Well, they're just coming on. Yeah, just coming Let's on. Let's get at it. Whew. Sweet. He almost come in the boat. <laughs> oh, my. That's all I can say. We're being cast in the dries. We've had phenomenal sedge fish and then this big i don't know what he is he looks 24 oh. plus for sure oh he comes up and he just all i saw was his back i was just tweaking it and it was going and he just went like that didn't he? just beautiful <laughs> set the hook oh my beautiful dry it fly was just take the best dry fly you're oh. ever gonna have like that yeah the sedge right in front of us is just a sedge hatch came off we are using the emergers, yeah. then we switched over this See, to dry. And we mentioned it before, you know, that's the cool thing about fishing caddis, especially when you get, you get so many options with mayflies and caddis, right? Mayflies, you get all the different hatches, right? They come up as a nymph, and then you get them, you get them dry, that's calabatus, and then of course with the sedge, same thing, right? You can catch them on the nymph, but the emerger as they're coming up, and then on the dry. And this guy's on a, this guy, you gotta this see guy's him. a toad. I He's know. big. <laughs> Just don't want to make oh, sure you don't yeah. lose them. <laughs> oh, don't say that. I got to keep them out of the anchor rope. I'm going to try to grab the net while I'm filming at the same time. 
Oh, and you know, when you get the big fish, they're just down there shaking. Oh, wow. This size fish on a dry fly, like only up in the caribou. Man, oh man. Oh, yeah, you got, look at that. Look at that toad. And he wanted it, like he ate it. He ate it. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's beautiful. You know, a beautiful thick. Look at oh, that. the Miklux edge. The Miklux edge, and he won it. So it's uh, yeah. Look at that. Might need uh, might need the four sets. Maybe. No, no, I got him. So there it is. You know, there's uh, there's our Miklux edge. You know, it's small, big, doesn't really matter. They're just aggressive. When those caddis are coming off, they want it. And here he is. Here, he's uh, you know, he looks to be about 24 inches. I'll try to just hold him up real quick. Oh, I can't even, I can't even imagine trying to get him that way. I'll just try to get him without losing that. There he is there. Look at that. Look <laughs> at the gorgeous on the colors on the dry. Oh, oh he's gone. <laughs> so, sedge fisher, when you come for sedge, you know, they, you know, they're down, they love marl bottoms. Okay, so if you got no weed, just big marl flats or real mud flats, Caddis love that. You see caddis trails everywhere. When they start emerging, they come up on an angle. So we found using sink tips and intermediate clear intermediate sinks work the best. Sink tip really gives it that nice motion. Clear intermediate sink's pretty good, but I find the sink tip is the best. And then once they're once they're on top, man, they're skittering. You see the small sedge, you see big, big, you know, big sedge. When they're skittering and you get dry like this, <laughs> can't beat it. So again, recommended setups. You should have a sink tip, you should have a clear intermediate sink, and you need a dry line. So I would strongly recommend, if, as a two as a minimum, you need your dry and a sink tip. Those are the two that I would strongly recommend. Let's get to more. Sport Fishing on the Fly is brought to you by Togan's Fly Shop. Maui Jim Sunglasses. And Hardy Rods and Reels. Oh, there he goes. Oh, man. Look at the center <laughs> of the lake. <laughs> and the sedge has been just working great. Well, you know what we should uh, yeah. do then? Should tie one. Let's go to the bench. Yeah, tie a sedge. Okay, let's go to the bench and I'll tie a sedge and then we can come back to this fish. Well, today on the bench, I want to tie you up the Mikulak Sedge. Now, it is one of the, if not the, best dry fly pattern you're going to use when traveling sedge adults are on top of the water and emerging. Make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the fly. For the hook, we'll use a Togan's 3X long curved size 8. We'll use some 8 aught pale olive thread to tie with, some natural elk hair for the tail, some natural elk hair for the wings, some UV2 CLX dubbing in dark olive for the body, and a brown saddle hackle for the hackle. So to start the fly off, I've put the hook in the vise, and I'm going to actually build up a good layer of thread. I want to cover the entire hook. And it goes a lot quicker if you have a rotary vise. I could use the rotary function, but I'm just going to cover up the whole hook with thread. Now the thread's on, I've taken a pinch between my uh, thumb and my finger of elk hair. And you got a whole bunch of this fluff on the back. Just make sure you pull all that fluff out before you tie it in. And then we want to stack the stack the elk hair. So you put in your stacker and stack it nice so it's all even. Now that I have the deer hair stacked, I'm going to measure out just a small amount. Again, it's only going to be, you know, a half inch, just about uh, probably double as, as wide as the, uh, the hook gap. Put in the tail. And when you put it in, when you lay on elk hair, take one, two, at least two or three loose wraps and then wind forward. And as you wind forward, tighten up. What we're going to do is cover up a lot of the hook with this elk hair because we're going to tie this in and build up the body. So we'll cover most of that and then trim off your excess. Now the tail's tied in, I'm going to take a pinch. Again, you don't need a whole bunch. You need about two or three wraps of dubbing here. 
So I'm just going to take a pinch of the dubbing, keep it onto the line, just dub it on your, on your thread, and take, you know, one, take a few wraps, and I usually go over it with the thread a little bit. And you just want a small, small amount of dubbing there. Now we take another pinch of our elk hair, and we're actually going to pull out all the rough stuff at the end, stack it, and tie it in as the first wing. Now when you tie it in as the first wing, I'm going to go about halfway the length of the tail, halfway down the tail. Again, one, two, three loose wraps, and then tighten up. This way, your wing won't flare on you. It'll keep it nice and flat on the hook and only flare it slightly. And that's what we want. Now we're going to take another pinch of dubbing. And again, just enough to take about three or four wraps up the hook to form a little bit more of the body. Now we take another clump of our elk hair. And again, we're going to set it about uh, halfway down the first wing we put in. Take one, two, three loose wraps, move forward a little bit, and then tighten up. And again, that'll allow that wing to lay down nicely on the hook and won't flare on you. Now that we have the second wing tied in, you can take a little bit more dubbing just to finish off the body and leave yourself about a half an inch near the eyelet to finish off with the final wing and the hackle. Now I've taken my final clump of elk hair and I'm going to again pull out all the fluff at the end and stack it and then tie it in as the third wing. Now when we tie it in as the third wing we're going to go halfway again down the second wing and this time again we want one you know, two or three loose wraps and then tighten, but don't cut off your excess yet. What we're going to do is just wrap that forward and pull it up and we're going to leave a little head on the fly. So when you cut this, leave yourself a good half an inch of a flared head on the fly, just so it can wake in the water. Now that we have the final wing tied in and a little bit of a, a flared head on the fly, we're going to tie a hackle in just behind, behind the head, actually in front of that third wing. And we're just going to take, you know, four or five wraps of the hackle to build that hackle on the fly. Once I have the hackle tied in, I'm going to move my thread forward. I always like to whip finish in front of the head on the fly just so that that head stands up and it can actually wake in the water. So we'll whip finish right at the front behind uh, the head or in front of the head, just at the eyelet. Now to finish the fly off, I like to trim the bottom hackle directly flat, just flush. So I'm just taking my scissors, laying it exactly parallel to the hook and cutting off the bottom. I don't worry about trimming off the top, just the bottom hackle, so it lays flat on the water. And there it is, the finished Miklux Sedge. Again, as I said in the intro, it is one of the best, if not the best, dry fly pattern you're gonna use when there's traveling sedge coming off and skittering on the top water. Very exciting, something you have to try fly fishing. Sport Fishing on the Fly is brought to you by Togan's Fly Shop. Maui Jim sunglasses and Hardy rods and reels. Look yeah, at the size of that fish. It's another monster on the dry fly. Just a monster. <laughs> Look at them. I know, they're like, gorgeous. That's, just, that's a, oh. Well, so it's over 24 inches for oh, sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I can't even. No. Oh, I... <laughs> getting your workout. Oh, you can't even. A five is not enough. You know, you need a six weight because that's like when they're close like this too. Look at just to lift him. Yeah. That thing is like eight pounds or so. Look at. Yeah. Oh. 
right in the snout. I can see that. Oh, 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 and out pops the sedge. Oh, <laughs> out he come right out of the nose of the. Oh, look at that tank. I know they're just oh, big. Oh my God! Look at the size of that. Man, sedge fishing like this is fish of this size. Man, you don't even catch them like this in the. With the tequila. Yeah, on the dry fly. <laughs> on the dry fly. Look at, look at the size of that. Look at those. Oh. Look at that panache. Beautiful thickness to it. Yeah, just gorgeous. Let them rest there. That's a big fight on a. Look at the girth on oh, them. Oh, yeah, look at how gorgeous that is. I like a steelhead. Yeah. No, they're just nice, nice and thick and fat, yeah. healthy. Oh, here he goes. He's getting ready. Starting to. There he goes. There he goes. Wow. Oh, and the <laughs> sedge flying by. Oh, oh my man. This is just incredible. <laughs> Never had dry fly like this, wow. eh? On a lake. It's, it's crazy. Fish of that size. The fight is epic. I've been to the end of my backing, I think, a couple of times. 100 <laughs> yards is not enough. Well, what would you think about the sedge show? <laughs> that was pretty <laughs> phenomenal. Wasn't it? I was happy catching them with the mergers, you know, under yeah. down there, you know, merging sedge, and you had your little fat guy or yeah, little chubby, chubby guy. Yeah, it was working good. Yeah, and you know, we showed you all the different techniques. You know, the whole show was about sedge fitching. We showed you the indicator stuff that you can get away with, uh, you know, leech patterns that look like sedge. You can obviously use a clear intermediate sink. You can use a sink tip for the sedge pupa. And then of course the dry. That and that's why I keyed on the dry, because you know what? The majority of our fishing, you cannot beat that kind of fish on a dry fly. No, especially tank. on a lake. You yeah. know, throwing big mick like sedge. 24, out there. 26 oh. inch rainbows on a dry fly. Huge fish. Come on, phenomenal. Time. <laughs> yeah, phenomenal. fantastic. But we got some people to thank, of course, Linda and Ted McDonald for putting us up at Teddy Wood. Beautiful location here. Fantastic. Right, right on the water. Yeah. Chimo RV and uh, in, in Williams Lake. They also yeah. have a location in Quinella. Anyway, they gave us two RVs to use, bring up to Ted's place. I know. Fa fantastic accommodation right on the water. Boat's parked, off we go. So. Can't beat it. But when you come out here, take care. Conserve our waters. And we'll see you next time we take you sport fishing on the fly. Phenomenal. <laughs> <drive>. <laughs>